everyone, welcome back to Definitely Casual PCs, and my camera's way closer than I would like, but um, I have stuff in the way. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to be building a Windows XP gaming computer, something I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time, mainly because um, I've always wanted to play certain games, and I never could unless I had, they came out on console, or I went over to a friend's, had to go to a friend's house that had a computer that would run it. So these parts, so now I was able to build a computer. Or I, so I wanted to build a computer for a while. I wanted to build one back in high school, but I didn't have the funds or the money to, or the time or the energy to do so. And plus, I was already had all these council games, and I just stuck with councils for the longest time. So now I'm going to be able to go back and play some of these games I never got to play before on the hardware that I never got to experience, which is awesome. So I do want to say one thing real quick. The beginning part of this video, I'm going to be talking about a the old XP gaming computer that I gaming computer that I'm currently using, and then you'll see why I'm building this one. Um, I know some people don't like a lot of talking, so I am going to put a timestamp uh, somewhere here-ish. I don't know where it's going to be. To skip ahead to the parts and the build process. Uh, but if you do want to hear me uh, at least explain why I'm building a XP gaming computer when I already have one, then stick around. And it's Hopefully it will be entertaining. Hopefully. I don't know. Let's get to the old computer. Okay. This is my old XP gaming computer. I'm using the word gaming very loosely here. This is an old Optiplex 320 from about, I think, 2005, 2006. In fact, I'm actually going to probably say 2004. I don't actually remember when this came out. This is a backup computer that uh, I picked up from the mechanic shop I work at. It was a... Computer that was a main office computer, then it was put into a back room computer when they upgraded computers, and then when they upgraded computers again, they moved those computers to the back rooms, and then this got put into storage. My boss was going to toss it out, and this was around the time I wanted, I was trying to find an XP computer just for playing games, and I figured this would be a really good starting point. Um, with a few problems. The problems I was thinking numerous. Uh, first off, it was supposed to have Windows XP Service Pack 1 or 2. I don't remember. Uh, it has Service Pack 3 on it now. But it came with Windows 7. With a hunt with 512 megabyte of RAM. And onboard graphics, which max out at 128 megabytes. So it's barely adequate for even being just a generic use computer. The problems with machine are, the big one, is a BTX based board. These are horrible. It means I can't put a different motherboard in here or any other parts that would fit a normal ATX. Um, but after I got Windows XP installed on this thing, that's when all the problems started happening. Uh, I had to put a different CD drive in there. Uh, I had to put, uh, um, it max out the RAM at, this board supports four megabyte only, or four gigabyte only. 32 or 64 bit, doesn't matter. Four, meg, four gig is it. So I maxed this thing out with four gigabyte of DDR to 800 mega, megahertz. Um, it improved in performance a little bit because I had extra Leroy headspace for programs, but really didn't help that much. I decided to run everything on low. In fact, this is the computer I used in the Flight Simulator 2004 video, I believe. Um, so you're kind of aware of the performance and how visually this thing looked. Um, so I tried to put a uh, video card in here, and I tried every video card I had in my collection at that time. Uh, every one of them, my 800 GT, I tried. I wouldn't wouldn't post. Different power supply, still wouldn't post. I, th I think I ended up putting the 400 watt cooler master in here just to see if it would work, and it, and it doesn't. It just didn't work. Uh, then the hard drive failed. I installed a new hard drive, reinstalled Windows XP and all the drivers, and it still just wouldn't. It I, it wouldn't let me install a video card. Until I found one video card at Wood, and that is this little bitty. This is an NVIDIA GT120. Yeah, a 120. With one gigabyte of DDR, I believe it's uh, DDR2. Yeah, DDR2. This has got to be the weakest graphics card yeah, on the PCI Express lane anyway that I have in my collection. But it worked. It posted. 
give me a video, and it improved my game performance a little bit. So I figured, screw it. Well then, after I was playing some games, I ran a benchmark, PC Mark 05. And I noticed that the results were saying I only had 2 gigabyte. Well, that makes no sense because I had 4 gigabyte. Well, so I thought, well, I'll reseed everything because maybe it got jostled while I was installing this. No, nope, still only said 2 gigabyte. I tried new RAM sticks. I tried different RAM sticks. I tried slower speed RAM sticks. It still only displayed 2 gigabyte. Couldn't quite figure out why until I pulled this out and re-benchmarked it and I got my 4 full gigabyte. Here's why I'm not using it as a gaming computer anymore. The reason why only this card works is because this card draws only 20 watt of power. In fact, I think it's like 19 watt. Dell hardware limited on this specific motherboard, this specific revision with this specific BIOS, and I've already tried updating the BIOS, it doesn't fix it, only puts out 25 watt on the power PCI Express lane. Yeah, a third of what the standard normally is. They claim for voltage reasons, whatever. But here's the catch. If you install a video card or anything in the PCI Express or the PCI slots, it doesn't matter. Any of these three slots, anything's installed, it hardware shuts off RAM slot 2. And it's designed that way. So, a machine that only has a... I didn't explain the CPU either. It originally came with a, a dual-core E2140, and I put a E2220 dual-core, a full 1 gigahertz faster, with more cache and stuff. So I, I did increase performance a little bit. It will not support any of the Core 2 Duke quads, or the Core 2 Extremes, or the Pentium dual cores. Just like a specific range of like five Core 2 Duo processors. So this machine is extremely limited. It's got a weird architecture. It's just, it's just not that good of a computer. So this is one of the reasons why I'm building a new computer, or newer computer. So let's get to building. The first part I'm going to be using is the motherboard. This is a MSI P31 Neo version 1. Uh, specifically, the part number is MS7392 version 1.0. Um, there's really no specific reason why I chose this board. I mean, there's a lot of other better boards out there. In fact, I do have this AM3 Plus um, M5A99FX board, which takes uh, FX-based chips. But this, I feel, is a little too new for what I want to do. Um, mainly because it takes DDR3 and the FX line of chips, which are not the greatest uh, era of chips. I also could have went with this AM2 board from ASUS, the M2A VM, with its matching uh, HDMI output. But again, I kind of don't want to do AMD with this build. Um, so I'm not going this route. I wanted to stick with the LGA775 platform because I feel this is the best era for XP era builds. And I would have went well with this one because this is also LGA775 and it has a lot of the same features. Uh, LGA775 socket, ATX20 pin, ATX, or ATX24 pin, uh, PCI, PCI uh, X1, and PCI X standard slots. But this is a little bit too new for what I want. This is a DDR3. In fact, it can be overclocked to 1333, which is actually pretty fast. So I didn't want to, I just didn't want to have anything that was going to be too over dramatic. And this actually is uh, very similar to the board I was actually looking at back in high school when I wanted to originally build uh, this XP computer. Uh, I wanted MSI because I just love the red. Even though it's not my favorite color, I really love the kind of dark red, light reds, pure reds that's in here. It really, it, it kind of stands out to me from all the green boards that OEMs were using at the time. For the CPU, I'm going with a tried and true. Or two quad Q6600 clocked at 2.4 gigahertz. So this is not the most powerful CPU of this platform. I do have CPUs that are dual core that are faster, and I have a quad core that's faster, but it doesn't have you know 
It just doesn't seem like it'd be a right fit. This board supports this. In fact, this board supports all the Core 2 Duos and all the Core 2 Quads, including the Core 2 uh, Extremes Quad Cores, which I do not have one. I might put one in later because I just... This is a CPU that when this came out, I heard about it. It was an early quad core. It was kind of that... I need to clean that off real quick. It was that CPU that was like, you know, almost it's almost the the go-to CPU for XP builds. So I know it's a little cliche, but cliche is fine with me on this build. RAM. I was going to go with just pulling the RAM out of the uh, old XP machine, the Optiplex. But while I was turning apart some machines, I came across a matching pair of Mushkin Silver Lines. Uh, these are two gigabyte each at 800 megahertz, so they are four gigabyte total. Really, only one stick would be just fine for this build, but I want to just go overboard with this and max it out. Uh, even though I'm using 32 bit XP, which maxes out at, I believe, uh, 3.75 gigahertz, gigabyte. And when it's all said and done, you only have like 3.3, 3.4, whatever it is, left over for anything else, which is fine. It'll be running in dual channel mode, so I should be able to get some uh, more performance out of that. I'm going to be using this Thermal Take TR2 copper bottom uh, cooler for two reasons. Mainly is um, it's a cooler that I know will fit in the case I'm going to use, which I'll come to that here in a second. And um, I don't know where the screw the screw mount is for this board. Um, I had one laying around, but I don't know what happened to it. So I'm going to use this snap one real quick. So hopefully that'll keep it cool. For storage, I'm going with this. The Western Digital Raptor Drive. These are 10,000 RPM drives. These actually gave some early uh, solid state drives a run for their money. The lower capacity one, it's 80 gigabyte. That's more than enough for Windows XP and the few games I'm going to install on here uh, just to test it. I do have a second one uh, somewhere that I have formatted and tested, and it does fully work. I actually have four of these. Two of them I haven't uh, fully tested yet, but they are formatted. So if I ever need a second drive for storage, I have two. The 8800 GT, 320 megabyte. This is about as iconic as I can find for Windows XP. In fact, this is actually the card I wanted to use. Um, I wanted to get back in the day, but obviously these were a little pricey. I don't fully know if this card works. It does give a boot screen po when it posts up, but it beyond that, I have not tested it. So for all I know, this card might actually not work. If it doesn't, I do have a plan B, which is going to be pushing the era of what I want this build to be. So hopefully, please work. The sound card. I could I could just stick with the integrated audio because this does have six channel audio, and actually the reviews on the board, it's actually a really good audio system on this board. But I want dedicated audio. I want EAX support. I want a sound blaster Otter G Two ZS. And yes, I could actually go with a sound blaster XFI card. I do have one but I don't know if it works. Story of my life. Uh, it was actually in my current Windows 10 computer for a while because I wanted dedicated hardware. Because I was having some uh, having some sound issues actually on the, on the headphone side. And all of a sudden it just quit working. I don't know if it was a driver issue or not. But this is actually the second, from what I could tell, like the second best card for a build like this. So that's what I'm going to go with. For a power supply, I'm going to be going with this fairly new uh, Cooler Master uh, 400 watt. This should be more than enough to run the board, CPU, and this uh, and all those stuff in here. There's there's just no way that you know in my mind that because you, know, you know 400 watt that's that's plenty of power for, even for modern stuff. So this older hardware should run just fine with it. So let's go take a look at the cases and uh, then we'll get, get to building. 
As for PC cases, I actually have uh, three different cases I could use. The first, and each of them has their pros and each one has their cons. The first one is this one. I'm not exactly 100% sure of the manufacturer. Um, I believe on the bottom it's branded uh, Antec Designed, so I don't know if this is an actual Antec case or if this is just a design that Antec kind of sold out. One of those big bolt cases, it's, what's really nice is that it's got a powered by NVIDIA badge here, so the 8800 GT will actually work with the badging. This says Athlon 64X2, so that badge is wrong, I'm gonna have to take that off. And it's got some kind of local-ish uh, computer badge there, but this case is actually really nice. I love the design of it. Small cooling port on the back, but big 120 millimeter exhaust fan. got a fan on the front mount here. The only problem I don't like about this case, this particular one, is to get to it you have to take the top off and the side panel pull off top ways, which I'm not 100% sure if I 100% like that design, but it is still a design I can use. Um, it does already have a CD drive in it, which is a light scribe. In fact, if I if I do you not use this case, I might pull it out. My other case options are this one. I have no idea of the manufacturer of this case. There's no branding or markings on it. Extremely dusty. Um, in fact, it's just a generic bulk, cheap case as far as I can tell. The only thing, this thing, um, the difference is, it's got a much bigger side cooling pan here, which I think you can take this mesh out and put a cooling fan on this, which, I don't know if I will. There's a front fan mount, but there's almost no holes for ventilation. It has a much smaller, I believe, 90 millimeter or eight, even 80 millimeter exhaust fan. Um, but this one, annoyingly, to take the side panels off this one, you have to roughly pop the front off and it pulls forward which as you can see is quite annoying. But again, just like with the Antec case, it's not overly that big of a deal because I'm not going to be in here all the time swapping parts every other day. You know, if this was a you know Socket 7, Super Socket 7, where I'm swapping parts left and right, uh, doing benchmarking and tests and videos and stuff, then I might go I might be a bigger problem, but anyway. So there's this case, and then there's this case, which, again, I don't know the manufacturer of this particular case. Uh, so if anyone knows the manufacturer, because I've seen other cases with this style side before, but the front's different. This one is... About the same as the other two cases, uh, two three and a half inch drive bays up front, three five and a quarter power button, no dedicated reset button, which is kind of annoying. But big internal uh, vent vent fans here, one twenty millimeter pre installed fan here, bunch of options, and this one actually pops off the normal way, um, and they're. But the only thing is, there's no spot for a front uh, for a front uh, cooling fan. But it is a completely toolless design. So if I was to be swapping components in and out, it wouldn't be that big a deal. But uh, another problem is that um, with no front cooling fan, I do want to make sure I keep these components cool. So I might actually go with the Antec case uh, and save this for a different build. Um, I think I'm just going to use that Antec case because Antec's that brand that kind of, when you think of XP era builds, you kind of associate with Antec. So. Let's get the building. Okay, so I decided with the uh, the Antec case. I'm gonna leave this on for right now until I get a 
I want to get a sticker that says Core 2 Quad. I think I found those on eBay. So let's get this build going. Oh, and um, before I do this, I noticed that this fan has a little cool little switch. So it's a selectable speed. I'm going to leave this at the medium. Because it doesn't plug into the board, it plugs into uh, the Molex connector, which is kind of interesting. And there's a small Antec fan already mounted in the front, so cool. I think that's everything. Let's go test it out. Install Windows, uh, XP, install some games, see how it works. Hey everyone, so I just, I'm in the middle of editing the XP video. It's actually upstairs uh, in the middle of editing. I came down here to get a little quiet for this section here. Uh, in the middle of editing, I realized that I was wearing um, a certain shirt, specifically this blue shirt I wore throughout the entire video. Um, it actually had been two weeks from the time that I said I had built the computer and started installing the games and driver software and XP to the section of the video where I said I was having problems. I because it had been so long and I had done laundry, I kind of forgot I was wearing the I wore the blue shirt first. Um so it kind of looks like it's all one video. I did it all in one shot or one day. Uh it wasn't. It was like a week, two week period. It kind of does look look a little off in the middle of editing, but I didn't bring I guess I didn't bring it up that it had been a week or two weeks. I guess I was just kind of flustered that I finally got the stupid thing to work. So I just wanted to clear that up because I know somebody might notice that and put it down in the comments that, hey, you're wearing the same shirt throughout the entire video. I had done laundry. I grabbed the exact same shirt and wore it. So just wanted to clear that up. Um, so I had a some, some hardware problems I want to talk about real quick. Uh, first thing was, got it all put together, got the drivers installed. Um, installed some benchmarks, I installed some games, like Fallout 3, I installed, I installed Crisis, Unreal Tournament uh, 2004, uh, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and a couple games that I really wanted to play when I was in high school around this time and would have played had I had the money or the means to build a uh, XP gaming computer. I had hardware problems with this thing ever since I put it together. Um, I started running some benchmarks like PC Mark 05, which unfortunately it won't run the full benchmark and give me a score because I'm missing Windows Media Encoder 9 and Media's, Windows Media Center 10 because of the version of XP I'm using. I'm using 32 bit Service Pack 3, but with some stuff removed to make installation easier. Um, but anyway, I started having some problems. It would it was it suddenly just gray screen and locked up. Uh, we started it, same thing except it gave me some really weird art uh, artifacts on the screen when playing the games at any basically any resolution above. Well, under the tournament, if I turn it up above low, it would just give me like little squiggle lines all over the screen in a grid, which I had no idea what that meant. And then the gray screen again. So I spent about a week tearing. 
this computer apart, trying to diagnose what was going on. And I just couldn't figure out what it was. I tried different CPUs. I tried different uh, sticks of RAM. I went back and just grabbed the OEM green ugly stick uh, RAM sticks. I tried one RAM stick. I tried uh, four one gigabyte RAM sticks, trying to just uh, eliminate everything I could. I had all the fans unplugged, seeing that maybe there was something going on there. Turns out uh, it's something that somebody actually so somebody brought this somebody brought this to my attention during my Gate95 gaming PC that I built out of the Windows 2000 motherboard. And I told and I said that I use an older style power supply that had an ATX20 pin because I was looking for the certain voltage of the negative 5 rail because a lot of modern power supplies do not have the negative 5 rail for the older uh, boards. Usually the negative 5 rail was only really for ISA cards. Uh, but it was still a necessary voltage rail. And uh, the viewer or the, the commenter had uh, reminded me, because I didn't mention this in the video, and it kind of spaced off then, and I spaced off on this one too. It's not just the voltages, it's the amperages. You gotta make sure you use the right power supply in your build with the right amperages on the right rails. Certain CPUs require more amps on 12 volt rail than other CPUs will, which is why some of the early Pentium 4s and the, some of the uh, Athlons and some of the higher, you know, running uh, CPUs had to have a higher amperage on the rail on 12 volt on the C for the CPU connector. That wasn't the problem here though. The problem here though was I used the wrong power supply. I originally installed a fairly new Cooler Master 400 watt. It was a almost brand new power supply. It was basically, you know, it wasn't in a box, but it was barely used. Um, from what I could gather. Um, so I figured it'd be enough to run this because I have come across PC towers from this era, the XP era, that had three, 300 watt, you know, 350 watt, 250 watt, and they ran just fine. But turns out the Q6600 and the 8800GT required a lot more wattage. In fact, the minimum the minimum wattage I was looking at was 450 watt. At idle, it ran just fine. If I tried to put any load on this machine, it would hard lock. I was dumb and put the wrong power supply in. So I swapped out the power supply for a 650 watt uh, NWIN power supply. I the other hardware problem I had was that the 8800GT I was using, the one that I knew worked, gray screens. It will not, it'll Bring up the post, uh, post screen and all that stuff, but it, it just immediately gray screens. I don't know if there's something wrong with it. I don't know if I'm having a, if I have the wrong driver because the drivers I'm using now for the card I swapped it out with are working just fine. So I actually swapped it out for another card uh, of around the same area. It's a GTS 250, one gigabyte, which is a little bit more power, but this 650 watt is still above the threshold for it. In fact, I have I have been running Fallout 3 at high settings. I can't run it Ultra because I still get a, it still, it locks up, it locked up once, uh, but I had it on Ultra and I had everything set to high on Fallout 3. Um, I just think that this, that this GTS 250 might still just be a little bit more power hungry than I'm thinking, especially with the uh, Q6600. Unreal Tournament 2004, I can crank that up to, you know, holy shit, when <laughs> uh, when you set all the graphics detail to high, or ultra. I did not know it did that. I mean, I've heard rumors it did that, but it was actually pretty, startled me a little bit when I clicked everything graphical to high and I heard, holy shit. Um, do I need to put a language warning at the beginning of this video? Probably not. We're all adults here. Uh, so a lot of games I've been running on this run just fine. Um, I'm not going to do any gameplay here in this video because I just got this thing put back together. It's uh, kind of late at night. And I'm a little sleep deprived of it as it is. Not from this, from other stuff. Um, but this is this is a great running actually machine right now. Sorry that I'm just basically rambling and talking. Uh, talking about the hardware problems with this, but now it is running completely stable, um, completely uh, 
I can I can run most of my games on high, which is awesome because before with uh, the old computer, I'd run everything on low, and it was like six forty eight hundred by six forty or maybe it was six forty by four eighty. I don't know. I had to run it pretty low, but I I do want to talk about something real quick, um, and that is the reason why I built this machine was because I wanted to go back to my high school days where to play the games I never got a chance to. Um, I never had a chance to play Unreal Tournament 2004 or Crisis or Fallout 3, uh, Skyrim, or Skyrim, Oblivion, uh, Half-Life. Uh, a lot of the games uh, a couple of my friends told, told me about that they're great games, I had to wait for them to come out on council or actually play them years later because I've only recently played Crisis on Xbox 360. Uh, because I never had it for PC, and now I do. So now I can enjoy all the games that I missed out on during my uh, high school days. And I also wanted a computer that was a lot more powerful than the OEM Optiplex that was ticking me off really bad. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for watching uh, this video of the XP computer build. This thing you're going to be seeing a lot more of. Uh, once I get the side panels and top cover put back on, because right now they're off and I have exposed cables. This computer build is done. So I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Uh, if you and staying with me for basically not really showing much with this PC except for talking about it. I know a lot of people don't like rambling and talking with getting nothing done, but I kind of like to explain things when I build build stuff and talk to me somebody who just throws parts together and talks about all the technical details you know that's fine and all i don't i'm not bashing those guys but i kind of like to, i like to hear reason reasons why people do things i really do like i want to hear the reason why you know somebody builds an xp computer or a vista or millennium or windows 98 i want to hear the reason why because to me it's you know more of a personal story as to why they spend all that time and energy sometimes money to build old vintage hardware. Thanks for watching the video. Hit the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button if you like this video. If there's something you didn't like about it, please put it down in the comments so I can fix it for future videos. Uh, hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload and make more video, more content. Um, and thanks for sticking with me on this Windows XP build. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.